Welcome back to Power Kids. We're so glad that you tuned in again because we have some special things for you again. You're so special. You know what? Jesus thinks you are the best. Yes, he does. He's paid the same price for me, for Pauline, for you, for everyone. No different price. You are what he paid. You're worth the precious blood of Jesus. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So um, tune in as often as you can because we have something new every show. Let's pray. Mm -hmm. Father God, thank you for this day. This is the day that you've made. We will be glad and rejoice in it. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for everything you did for us. Thank you, Holy mm -hmm. Spirit, for comforting us, for being our teacher, our mentor, our friend, our comforter. We love you. Amen. My name is Mary Stringer, and this is Pauline Larson, and she has an extra special guest today. Oh, yeah, Egbert. <laughs> this is Egbert. Egbert, you know, we're going to talk about um, how in all our ways we're supposed to acknowledge the Lord and he'll direct our path. You know, I, I've always kind of wondered, you know, why... Why did the chicken cross the road? I mean, you're a chicken, right? Oh, yeah. To get to the other side. Well, I know that, but everybody makes a joke about it. Oh, did you hear the one up? How the chicken crossed the road and rolled in the dirt. Well, I've never seen a chicken roll in the dirt, personally. I've had chickens, but I've never seen one roll in the dirt. All right. Why did he roll in the dirt? Because he was a dirty double crosser. <laughs> oh, well, let's go on with um, Ujin. Ujin probably didn't like a joke either. Oh, well. Hey. Hi. At least they didn't tell a joke about an eggplant. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there's one somewhere, but um, I'll have to search on the Internet for that one. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Would you like to say the memory verse? The memory verse! That's not what I meant. Oh, sorry. Yeah, you should be. Okay, you're forgiven. That was easy. <laughs> okay, now, the memory verse is Proverbs 3, 6. Proverbs 3, 6. In all your ways, acknowledge him. What? In all your ways, acknowledge him. Ooh. In all your plays, act on the ledge. Huh? What? <laughs> Isn't that dangerous? <laughs> yes, if that's what it said, but that is not what it says. In all your ways. Okay. In all your ways. Are you mocking me? No. <laughs> that's a good thing. In all your ways, acknowledge him. Jim? No, him as in God. Who? Oh. In all your ways acknowledge him. That's good. Thank you. The rest of it? The rest of what? <laughs> Eugene, concentrate. Focus, please. Oh. And he shall direct your paths. And he will direct your baths. <laughs> Not baths. Oh. Path, plural, paths. Who? And he shall direct your path. And where is that found? Right there. <laughs> In the Bible. The Bible! <laughs> really In <careful>. Proverbs. <laughs> I'll bring Egg back. Proverbs 3 6. Yeah. Who? Proverbs 3 6, Nicky Jim. What was that? No, that's New King James Version. Looks like Nicodemus to me. Just say the memory verse. Proverbs 3 6. Proverbs 3 6. That means in all your ways, acknowledge him, do what he says, and he will direct you the right way. Oh, why didn't you say so? I did, I just did. Thank you. Say goodbye, Eugene. Goodbye, Eugene. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Well, we like having fun on this show. 
four things that we need to learn about God. And, of course, we go over this, and the point being we need to be able to tell people about our faith. First thing is God loves me, and he loves you. Isn't that wonderful? The creator of the universe loves you. He knew about you. You were planned. Oh, no, my parents say I was an accident. You were an accident to God. He knew you before the foundation of the world. That's what the Word of God says. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, you are his child. He has a wonderful plan for your life, and he loves you. I think that's amazing. And what's even more amazing is I have sinned, you have sinned, and he still loves us. You know, there's some people that they'll love you as long as you do what they want or as long as you, you know, uh, don't cross them or whatever. Their love's what they call conditional, meaning depending on how you behave, they love you. But God loves us anyway. He may not like what we do, and there really is it's a real heaven and a real hell. He'll even let you go to hell if you want to. He doesn't want you to. In fact, he wanted you to go to heaven and be with him, and that's why Jesus died for us, because in the garden, when Adam and Eve were there, and I mean everything was perfect. That was a perfect world. Even the animals got along. There weren't any storms or uh, flies or mosquitoes. It didn't even rain then. It didn't rain until Noah's day. Uh, it was wa- the earth was watered by a mist. It was perfect. And yet Adam and Eve still sinned. They hated the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which is in the center of the garden, which God said, don't eat from that. And he said, if you do, you'll die. And, of course, along comes Satan. And at that point, he didn't crawl on his belly like a snake. He, was, he came in there and he told them, did God say? He made them doubt what God had said. And he said, did God really say? He said, I basically told him, yeah, what he didn't tell you is you'll be like God if you eat it. Well, they already were like God. They were created in his image. So he tricked them, and they fell for it. And then Adam and Eve were separated from God. And because of the line of sin, because they had sinned, death came into the, into the human race. And Jesus literally had to buy us back. He had to go die for us and buy us back and make us in right standing because the whole reason that God created us, he wanted a family. He wanted children. We are his children, but we have to accept him as our Lord and Savior, and that's what the fourth thing is. You have to make a decision to live for him. You can't live like the devil. You need to live and do things that please him. You need to obey his word, which is the word of God, and you need to do those things Once you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, your life changes, and it's wonderful. He has so many great things in store for you, and it's really fun to live for him because he created you, uniquely you. He doesn't want you to give up everything and have a boring life. He created you the way you were with a great plan for your life, and he knows the things that will make you happy. He knows the things that you were designed to do. And so once you accept him as your Lord and Savior, then you make that decision. I'm going to live for God. And when you love somebody, you want to please them. It's just natural. And he's just so wonderful. It's a wonderful serving God. Well, Mary's going to share from the Bible a lesson for us. Amen. Amen. Okay, and this comes from the book of John, you know, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the Gospel of John. And um, it's about... The wedding saver, not savior, saver. He Mm -hmm. saved the wedding. Mm -hmm. Jesus and his disciples and his mother Mary, probably his brothers and sisters if his mother Mary was there and he was there, um, went to a wedding in Cana. Now Cana is in Galilee and that area of Israel is in the northern part of Israel. Yeah, I've been there Mm -hmm. and it's cool. Miss Pauline has been there too. So it's like they all went to the wedding, and back then those weddings went on for days. Yeah, they didn't just have a wedding on a Saturday or a Friday or whatever day, you know, they decide. They had a wedding for like four days or longer. That means that the host of the wedding party, they had to feed the people for four days. That could get expensive. I could see where it would. Well, they were at the wedding feast. (sighs) And um, they ran out of wine. Yeah, they drank wine because those people were thirsty. Four days is a long time, and you get thirsty over four days, I'm sure. 
And before the guests at the wedding party celebration could no even notice, Mary noticed that they were running out of wine. Now Mary knew who her son, her oldest son, Jesus was, because she heard from the angel Gabriel that he was special, that he was, she knew he was conceived of the Holy Ghost, that he would, you know, save his people. Yeah. And it's like the angels confirmed it the day that he was born. The three kings, there was more than three, but the mag magi from the east, they were astronomers, not astrologers, astronomers. They confirmed it. There was so much confirmation, but she wanted, she's like, oh, wow, we got this big group of people. I want everyone to know how special my Jesus is. Mm -hmm. You know, it says, excuse me for diverting a little bit, but it says in the Bible that Jesus suffered every temptation that we suffered. Jesus was big brother to at least six siblings. How would you like to grow up <laughs> as the big brother, you know, to all these siblings under you? I imagine Mary probably <laughs> said to um, Simon and Joseph. Yeah, James, you know, when they would do things. Now, what would Jesus do? You know, that's pretty hard. Now, see, he probably, his brothers and sisters were probably there, too, and he hadn't done one miracle yet. They saw that miracle. Isn't that cool? They thought, what? My brother? My brother did that? What? Yeah. What are you talking about? You know, because they just thought of him as big brother Jesus. Well, he's more than a brother. <laughs> he's our Savior. But anyway, she went to Jesus, and she said, they're out of wine because she knew who he was and she knew he could do something. And he said, that's not our problem. What does that have to do with me and you? You know, my time has not come yet. Well, Mary must have pretty well known that his time was coming soon because she told the servant, she says, whatever he tells you to do, you do it. And so they're like, okay, well, we know Mary. She usually knows what she's talking about. So Jesus told the servants, fill the jars up with water. And they were looking at those jars and they said, what? <laughs> what good is water going to do? We don't need water, you know. We can go to a well and get water. We need wine. <laughs> and so um, he said, fill them up with water. Nevertheless, they filled it up with water. They obeyed Jesus' commands. They listened to Mary. Whatever Jesus tells you to do, do it. And then they took it to the head waiter because Jesus told them to. And he was like, what? Wow. This, this is awesome. This is the best wine I've ever tasted in my life. You know, wh where did you get this wine? And so they said, Jesus told us to fill the jars with water. And he's like, wow. He said, this is the best wine I've ever tasted. You know, usually they give the guests the best wine at the beginning. This was day four, at least. It could have been later. And um, you waited and gave us the best wine at the end. Yeah. If you obey Jesus, he will give you his best. Yes, he will. He is so good. Mm -hmm. He, You can't outgive no. Jesus. You can't give something better than what Jesus can give you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Isn't that wonderful? He's just so wonderful. i tell you what. I just love him. Um, <clears throat> well, we have a, an object lesson here first. Usually I go over the four things that we learn about God, and I'm going to just kind of go over them real quick before I talk about this. And that is the first thing is that we find that God loves us. And the second thing is that we have sinned. And every person needs a Savior. Even that little boy up there. Can you imagine a little boy like that? Little kids know kind of instinctively. They're selfish. They want everything their way. They want to yell, and they want to say, no, that's, I want it my way. Well, we're kind of like that, too, and that's why we need a Savior, because we need to do things that are right, and you can't, you can't go around hitting people and hurting people and doing bad things. And, and one thing we learn when we read the Word of God is how to do things right, 
And then uh, the next thing that we learn is Jesus died for us. Can you imagine that little boy? He doesn't even know it, but 2,000 years ago, Jesus died for him so that he could have life. Isn't that amazing? That is just so wonderful. Because back in the garden, Adam and Eve blew it. And they had a perfect world, and yet they blew it. And so uh, it's just wonderful to know that this little boy had a Savior. Well, he had to trust that. He has to learn to trust God. And he has to learn to live for him, just like we went over. And I want to say this. Um, if he was going to have his father hold out his arms and say, jump into my arms, would he do that to a stranger he didn't know? Probably not. But he would his father because he'd learn to trust him. And we're like little children in life. And we face things that are really kind of difficult. And we have to learn how to trust. We have to learn to trust God. And that just like that little child will put such confidence in his parents because he knows them. And then parents hold out the arms and say, here, come to me. Or when they first learn how to swim and they put them in the water, here, swim to me. They wouldn't do that for a stranger, but they'll do that for someone they trust. We need that childlike trust to trust our God. Amen? Now, go ahead. Amen. Okay, here we have a picture of a service dog. This one's a German Shepherd. Mm -hmm. And service dogs are called working dogs, and um, they help people. Now, I've seen service dogs with blind people, yeah. but they're also used with autistic children or people who have a heart condition or and their heart could stop or if they have a breathing condition and they can stop breathing. Comfort dogs, there are also comfort dogs and they cost a lot yeah. of money because they're highly trained. They take years to train these dogs. Usually they're at least $25,000. Um, they're not cheap because they're so specifically trained. But dogs are the type of animals who want to please you, who want to do what um, you tell them to do. Mm -hmm. And so if they don't, if they're not up to par, they won't be a service dog. Mm -hmm. But people totally trust in them, especially blind people. But people who live alone and they need, um, you know, a dog. Now they can't call on the telephone, but they'll have certain things in their house where they can like, push a button with their paw or something and it can alert emergency crews if something's wrong, if the person lives alone with the dog to alert um, emergency police or the ambulance or whatever. That's why they're so expensive. And um, anyway, there are people who will trust a dog like this totally. Mm -hmm. They can see the dog, but they don't trust God because they can't see God with their eyes. That's right. Yeah. And that's not right because you can't see electricity, but you trust when you turn the stove on or the fan or whatever that it's going to work because that electricity that you can't see works. Just because you can't see God with your eyes, he's still there and you can trust him. Amen. Amen. He will never lead you astray. He will never lead you in the wrong way so it's like thank god for service dogs yeah. there were thousands of people saved um in 9 11 you yes. know the twin towers yes. because yes. of service dogs isn't that amazing that is amazing that god created mm -hmm. dogs like that to save people's lives yeah and um what you need to do to learn to trust god first you have to read the bible yeah and then you have to pray. Mm -hmm. And then you have to talk to God. Talking to God, you just have to be still. I'm not thinking about sitting there and saying, oh, God, I love you. And then, um, oh, what was I supposed to go? I was supposed to go to my neighbor's house and play video games with him. And then you get back to praying. Um, and da-da-da, this, and yeah, um, what am I going to have for lunch today? Oh, I need to go to the store and buy that new video game. You know, and it may not be video games that is your your um, addiction. <laughs> They're, they are an addiction. You might be addicted to the internet. Yeah, that's not good to spend too much time. Spend time with God. Because he loves you and he wants to do good things for you. But be still and know that he is God. You know, at all of this, you know, going back and forth to uh, in your thoughts. No, just think about him. 
read his word and think about him and pray, and he will be worth a million. Well, that's, that's a low estimate. He will be worth a gazillion <laughs> service dogs. He will lead you in paths of righteousness. Amen. Amen. Thank you, God. You know, it's really interesting, but you take the word dog and turn that word around, and it's G-O-D. And I, I just know that God creates animals as kind of an object lesson. And I think he made the dog to show loyalty and to show an example of, of how a, a dog can be trained and will follow and want to obey and love their master. And that's, um, that's pretty neat. All right, we have our story. And, of course, we're, we're going to talk about the Navy SEALs. And they were stranded on a raft. They were kind of lost out at sea, and they were looking for a particular island, and they knew um, there was a fort there and also probably some enemy territory, but they were lost. They didn't know if they were at the right place or not. And so finally they drifted, and finally they came, and they washed ashore, and they came on an island, but they weren't sure where they were. So they ended up calling the commander and saying, you know, breaking radio silence is what they did, and they got chewed out for it because commander says, you are in enemy territory. The enemy can pick up on this and know where you're at. Your lives are in danger. You should not have done that. Well, they said, well, we don't know what to do. We don't know where we're at. We're lost. And he says, well, go find the old turtle. And the commander said, when I was younger and was first there, there was actually a fort on the island, on that island, and the old turtle found me and helped me find the tor fort and safety. Go find him. He'll help you. He does help from time to time. So they went looking, and sure enough, they found the old turtle. And then sure enough, they said to him, Would you help us? We were told we should come look for us, that you would lead us to the fort. You know how to get there. And the turtle says, Okay, but you've got to do exactly what I say. You cannot do anything else but exactly what I say. So they agreed. So they continued to follow him. And as we all know, turtles move very slowly. And they followed him, and... At one point, they were right there where they could see the enemy, and they were like, oh, I don't know if this is right. Maybe the turtle got confused. And a couple of them, you know, there's always a couple in, of people. You'll probably find that in your school or whatever. They think they know everything. They know better than everybody. And they want to do their own thing despite the fact that people warn them that's not really good. They think they know better. So sure enough, those two decided we're tired of following this slow old turtle we're going to go ahead and we're going to find our way. And we're going to beat you to the fort. Well, they went off and you know they were never heard from again. They disappeared. Because there were a lot of danger out there. And when the turtle said, stay close to him, he meant it. And in fact, in the dark in the night, you could, they could see eyes watching him and they did not look like friendly eyes. Well, they continued on. Of course, the turtle moved slowly. And there were storms. And it was lightning and thunder and rain. And it was scary. Because they knew they'd already seen their enemy around, but they continued to follow the turtle. And finally at daybreak, the weather changed, and guess what? They saw the fort. Oh, they were so happy. They were happy. They were celebrating. They were jumping up and down with joy and rejoicing. And then all of a sudden they realized, where was the old turtle? They looked around, and they couldn't find him. He had absolutely exhausted himself, leading them to safety. He had used, he had gone out of his way and used and strength he really didn't have to lead them to safety. And you know that reminds us of a Jesus who went to the cross and endured such terrible things so he could provide a safe way, so he could provide a way for us to miss have, make heaven and miss hell, a very real hell. If you've never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, this is your opportunity to do so. The Bible says all of sin and come short of the glory of God. The Bible also says, whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. You're a whosoever, right? Of course you are. Now, if you would like to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, this is your opportunity. You might even be sitting with some, even with your parents if they haven't. I know my parents didn't know about Jesus. I knew about it, about it before they did. And I just, if you want to say this prayer and accept Jesus into your heart, but you must believe, like Romans 10, 9, and 10 says, that God raised you from the dead. Believe with your heart and say it with your mouth. And so let's do this now. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for sending Jesus to die for me. 
I do believe God raised him from the dead. I believe it was my heart, and I'm saying it with my mouth. So I know I'm saved. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. I know you'll never leave me or forsake me. And I know when I get saved, which I've just done, the healing is for me. That there's a wonderful covenant and that the word for salvation is so superior. And that includes uh, healing. It means I don't have to be broke. It means I don't have to live a defeated life because there's promises in the word of God. So once you accept Jesus, you need to get a Bible, read it, and get in a church. If your parents don't go to church, then ask them if they would take you. And learn about Jesus and spend time with him. Because he comes to live inside of you. Creator of the universe wants to live in you. Isn't that amazing? It's so wonderful. In the meantime, Mary has something to share with us. Amen. Para los niños que hablan español, ¿sabes qué? La Biblia dice en Juan 3, 16, Porque de tal manera amó Dios al mundo que ha dado a su Hijo unigénito para que todo aquel, incluye a ti, amén, que en él cree no se pierda, mas tenga vida eterna. Amén. Solamente tienes que confesar con la boca y creer en tu corazón que Dios te levantó de los muertos y serás salvo. Repite conmigo, Señor Jesús, creo en ti. Eres el Hijo de Dios. Pagaste el precio por mis pecados Amen. al ser crucificado. Amen. Creo en tu sacrificio de amor. Me arrepiento de todos mis pecados y te pido Amen. perdón. Amén. Si has Orado esta oración, por favor, que nos escribe a 2222 Avenida L, Galveston, Texas, 77550, porque queremos mandarte algo muy especial. Amén.